your Living Faith TV. everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today we are going to make some very low carb foods. We're going to do a stuffed pork tenderloin. We're going to do a, a, a kind of a green bean casserole a dish and we're going to make some cheesy bread sticks, bread sticks made out of cauliflower and oh it's so good because those of us that eat low carb or maybe you're a diabetic and you just need to watch those carbohydrates, these are some recipes for you. Now, we're gonna get started on the pork tenderloin. Now, I already have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna make the stuffing first. Um, in here, I have about, I don't know, two or three tablespoons or so you don't have to be exact on that, of just cream cheese that I've crumbled with my hands and about a fourth of a cup of feta cheese that I also have crumbled. I've got some salt and some pepper. I have some thyme, some sage, ground sage. These are all dried spices. Dried ground mustard and some garlic powder that I want to put in there. And I'm going to stir that together, kind of working that cream cheese in with the back of my spoon. And then over here, I have about a cup or just like a, a box or a 10 ounce bag of frozen chopped spinach that I have thawed and I have squeezed out the moisture. Very important that you, with your spinach, that you um, drain it and squeeze out, I've squeezed it, but there's, see there's still more moisture. Not a lot because I've already squeezed this. You can either do it with your hand like this over a sink or a bowl, or you can put it in a towel, a clean kitchen towel, and wring it out that way. Either way, you just want that excess moisture. Now I've already drained that, and look at that, how much more is coming out. So we wanna take that and just add that to our mixture. If you don't have frozen spinach, you could use fresh and um, just, you know, maybe saute it for a minute or steam it for just a second. Or really, you could probably even chop it up and add it raw and it would cook in the oven. But I always just use frozen spinach. I think frozen spinach is one of the best bargains in the grocery store. And you want to stir all that together That's gonna be part of our stuffing. That also is delicious in a chicken breast. You can, you know, um, butterfly a boneless, skinless chicken breast and put that stuffing in there and then fold it over like we're gonna do this. It's really good. Now this is one pork tenderloin. Now when you buy a package of pork tenderloin, it's gonna have two in it. This is just one. It's also very important on one side there will be this white, stringy looking piece of a tendon and you've got to get that off of there. Um, that will not cook up and it will actually constrict and it's tough and it's chewy. I mean, it won't hurt you to eat it, but it's not very pleasant. So what I do is I take a, just a thin knife. You could use a boning knife, which is what this is, or you could use a little paring knife. Just slide it under there. You see how I just have very, very little meat. I don't want to waste the meat. And just peel that away. And you probably will have to do it in, you know, two or three little pieces. You just want to get the majority of that off of there. And then you might have to lift up this little flap on the one end. Just work it till you get that off of there. This is not difficult to do. A good sharp knife is really important in your kitchen, period. But especially with tasks like this. Okay, now if you've got any pockets of fat, 
um, you can take those off or you can leave them. Tenderloin is a very lean piece of meat. I love it because it's quick, quick cooking. Now, what I want you to do is lay it flat on your board. You're gonna take that same knife and you're gonna make an incision down the middle. You are not cutting all the way through. I work in just little bitty layers. And then this end is much thicker, so of course you're gonna go deeper on this one end. You're just wanting to open that tenderloin, but don't cut all the way through. You're gonna be approximately, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch um, in diameter, from, or not in diameter, in thickness from the bottom. Then take a piece of plastic wrap or parchment paper, something, whatever you have, and a meat mallet or a rolling pin, just something to pound this a little bit. You're doing two things here. You're creating an evenness in the tenderloin because this end is thicker than this end. And you're also making it a little bigger so you can hold more stuffing. And if you were doing this with chicken breast, you'd want to do the same process. Now, see how much bigger that is? That's the purpose of doing this. This did not touch the raw meat, but we want to discard that. Now, I want to take a little bit of salt. And I'm also going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil because tenderloin is very lean. I'm going to preheat my skillet. We're going to roast this, but we're going to brown it first. Let's get that going. Um, then you're going to take some, this is prosciutto that you can buy in any grocery store now. If you don't have this, you don't, you know, you don't have to put it in there. It just adds another layer of flavor. This is all about layering in those wonderful flavors. This is a very thin cut. Uh, prosciutto will always be thin cut. Um, it's an Italian ham, basically. It's delicious. You can eat it just like that. It's cured. But it is so, so good, and it adds a punch of flavor like nothing else, except maybe the next ingredient that we're going to put. You just want, I don't know, three or four pieces of prosciutto. Then we got some bacon. Because again, the tenderloin is very lean and very, very mild flavored. We're going to roll this up, so you just want to make sure that all the little pieces have some bacon. Then we're going to take our spinach mixture and just put that on our tenderloin. Okay. Don't overstuff it. I might have made just a little too much stuffing. I could probably do two with this. Don't overstuff. And then what you want to do is take the tenderloin and just either roll it up or just fold it over. Pushing all that stuffing back in. Now, if you have some kitchen twine or, you know, butcher's twine, you could tie this. I don't have any here, but what I do have are toothpicks. So what I do is I start in the center and I just run my toothpicks through about every couple of inches, just enough to secure it. That's all you want to do is just fold that over to secure it. Okay, that's all you want to, and this little tail end of it, I fold over and just run my toothpick through it because that's so thin that it will, um, or it could, I'm going to put another one over here, uh, it could just overcook and it's just not good when it's overcooked. In your skillet, 
I'm going to add some olive oil, or you could use canola oil, or you could use avocado oil if you're eating um, keto and using avocado oil. And we're just going to brown this tenderloin. So I'm, while that's browning, I'm gonna clean up my mess, wash my hands. When I come back, we're gonna take that out. I'm gonna show you how to finish it up. And then we're gonna start on a couple more recipes. So I'll see you in just a minute. Now, all I did was turn that over with some tongs. I'm just browning it. Now, I can only do it on two sides because of the toothpicks. But if you are using kitchen twine and you tie it, brown it on all four sides. And that's all we need to do. Very hot. We're gonna take that, put it on a baking sheet. And I'm gonna drizzle it with a little more olive oil on the outside, because again, this is a very lean cut of meat. And I'm gonna pop it into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until the pork tenderloin is cooked through. It cooks very, very quickly. It doesn't take long at all. Let me wipe my grease splatters up. Messy, messy, messy. That's all right. Now, I love green bean casserole. You know, the one that we eat um, that traditionally is made with a cream of mushroom or cream of chicken or some kind of cream of soup. That has a lot of carbs, or it can have a lot of carbs in it. So I'm gonna do something a little different. This is about, I don't know, half a pound, three quarters of a pound of fresh green beans. Now these are not like the half runners, the turkey crawls, the greasy beans that you have to cook for a while in the South. Um, these are just fresh snap beans that we've washed, we've trimmed. Sometimes I leave them whole and sometimes I cut them in half. It just depends on my mood. You can do whatever you wanna do with your green beans. If you're lucky enough to find the little Arigo Vers, which are the little French very, very thin green beans, fantastic in this recipe. We've washed them, we've trimmed them, and we put them on a baking dish lined with some parchment paper or uh, a nonstick aluminum foil because we're gonna be using a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Now in this bag, I have some just plain pork rinds. If you are eating low carb or keto or you're a diabetic or whatever, for whatever reason you're watching your carb, or you just simply want something delicious. I mean, all of these recipes are very good. Pork rinds will be your friend. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, ooh, no, thank you. But they really are very good. They provide a little flavor, but they also provide that crunch that you would get with the crumbly topping from whatever cracker crumbs or whatever you're putting on top of your casserole. Pork rinds are a great, great use to cut down those carbs. And I just put a few in a bag, and I just take my meat mallet or a rolling pin or whatever you have, and I wanna smash them into fine crumbs. What I sometimes do is take the bag of pork rinds, put them in my food processor or a really good blender like this one that'll chop things up, and just pulse them all up at once and then put them in an airtight container or a bag and they're ready to go. You see how fine they become? That's exactly what you want. Now I have in this bowl just a little bit, uh, you know, maybe half a cup, three tablespoons, whatever amount you want to use of just shredded Parmesan cheese. I've got some salt and some pepper. I'm gonna put these in that bowl with the other. Just gonna stir that around. Clean hands are your best kitchen tools. Just stir that around. Now, the green beans I'm going to coat with a little bit, probably maybe a tablespoon of olive oil. 
You could use canola or vegetable. Place those in a single sheet, and I'm finding some we didn't break. All right, in a, a single layer. Then take your mixture and crumble it on top of your green beans. You want to have an oven preheated or a toaster oven, and this is actually, if you have an air fryer, this is great done in the air fryer. Delicious. Just put them in a single layer, the bottom of your air fryer. And I like to drizzle the breadcrumbs with just a little bit more olive oil. Now, I use olive oil in this because I like the flavor, but it's also a very heart-healthy oil. And then we're going to pop this in a 425-degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the beans are... Now, they're not going to be mushy soft. They're still going to retain some crunch, which I like. Um, and the topping will be golden and brown. That cheese will melt, and it will just be delicious. Let's get rid of this. And we're going to start on another dish that, you know, if you're watching your carbs, which is what this program is about, you know, one of the things that you really just have to give up or eat in a, you know, very, very rarely um, type thing is bread. Cheesy breadsticks dipped in a marinara sauce are delicious. So we're going to make some breadsticks, if you will, but we're going to use a little bit of different ingredients. So this is my new favorite blender, actually. I love this thing. And I have a head of cauliflower that has been washed and just broken into little cauliflowerettes. Flowerettes. I'm actually going to cut this down just a little bit more. I'll just use the paring knife. And I'm going to just put it all in the blender. We're going to rice this, if you will. We're going to use uh, not that piece that fell in the floor. Um, well, I'm using a blender, but if you have a food processor that chops really good, you could use that. And cut this down just a little more. I don't think a paring knife is the knife of choice here, but that's all right. We will make it work. I use cauliflower in a lot of different recipes. And if you think you don't like cauliflower, try, the, try using it in a different way. Now, I love it just steamed. I love it raw. I love it roasted. But I find it makes a great addition to the recipes where you're trying to cut carbs. And, you know, it is now the end vegetable, of course. But I've always loved it. You want approximately, you know, I don't know, three or four cups or one regular head of cauliflower. You can buy riced cauliflower in the produce department, but I think it's expensive. I think you're much cheaper buying it and pulsing it yourself. If you don't have either one of these, you could absolutely grate it on the sides of a box grater. Most everybody has a box grater. And my blender is full. Let's see if we can fit this last little piece in there. I might have to do this in two batches. Let's try. Let's see what we can do. Let's live adventurously. Okay, let's see if I can even get the lid on it. All right. Nope. Come on, you. Nope, gonna have to take some out. Oh, well. That's okay. I think I had too much anyway. Let's take a little bit out. Now, what we want to do is pulse it. All right? Don't want to just let it go. You want to pulse it. Look at that, how quickly. And I'll show you what size you want. All right? You want your pieces to be about 
like that. And instantly, you have grated cauliflower. Now, I'm gonna just take a quick break, finish pulsing the rest of this up, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you how to make your breadsticks. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, we've got our cauliflower in a big bowl. You want to make sure there's no big, big chunks. I think that's good. All righty. Then we're going to add some salt, some pepper, a little bit of fresh garlic. If you don't have any fresh garlic, you can use dried garlic or garlic powder. But fresh garlic is really good in this. Then we're gonna add one egg. And we're gonna add some fresh basil and some fresh flat leaf parsley. I'm just gonna chop it. Oh, that basil smells fabulous. If you don't have fresh basil, just add some Italian seasoning. I'm not a fan of the dried basil. I mean, it, it's okay, but it's nowhere near the flavor of fresh. But you could use some dried Italian seasoning if you have it. Okay. Alrighty, there's that. And some grated parm and some mozzarella, shredded mozzarella cheese. Add that to your bowl. I have a baking sheet that I have lined with parchment paper. We're gonna just combine this to make our dough. If you need a little more moisture, you can add either some more mozzarella or maybe another egg as I make a mess over myself. Let's see where we are. Um, I think I need another egg. That cauliflower head was huge. That was the biggest head of cauliflower. I actually didn't use all of it. Just saved some of it for another dish. I'm gonna add one more egg to mine. If you need a little more moisture to hold it together, add another egg or some more mozzarella, like I said. Either one will work. The egg acts as a binder. That's much better. I'm just trying to incorporate all this together. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it out onto that baking dish. Okay. And you're gonna pat it out with your hands into a rectangle or circle if you want it it doesn't matter whatever shape you like I just you know traditional breadsticks would be long and skinny in there so I just kind of do a rectangle you want it to be about maybe a quarter of an inch thick all right then we're gonna top it with some more shredded mozzarella cheese, because you gotta have cheese on cheesy breadsticks. Just sprinkle that right over top of it, put it in a 425 degree oven, about 15 or 20 minutes, or until it's golden and cooked through. I'm gonna take a quick break, clean up. When I come back, show you how to finish this off with some sauce, and the rest of our food will be done. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Alrighty, 
Okay, now everything is done. Here are our green beans, our green bean casserole. Looking and smelling delicious. You just let them roast until the, the beans are cooked through. And then here is our pork tenderloin. Now it's very important that when you take this out of the oven, and this is true for any meat, let it rest for just a few minutes because you need those juices in the, the meat, and in this case the tenderloin, to redistribute back up into the meat. If you cut this immediately, all the natural juices from the, in this case the tenderloin, but any steak, roast, whatever it would be, are just going to run out. But if you let it set for a few minutes, you will have a much juicier product. Pull out the toothpicks or cut the, the strings if you're doing kitchen twine. And then just cut it. I like to kind of cut it on the bias. I think it just looks prettier. Cut yourself a couple of pieces of the best tasting. Oh, it's so good. You could use, instead of regular cream cheese, you could put some garlic and herb cream cheese, you know, those flavors that you can get in the grocery store. Mm. But there you go, a quick and easy and delicious, and might I add, very pretty meal that you can have any night of the week. It cooks very quickly. Now, here are our breadsticks that I just took out of the oven. These absolutely need to sit for about 10 minutes. 